she is part of our meeting today, but uh, she said that she won't be participating fully. I don't know whether is that true. Um, but we, as the committee, the, the joint uh, committee, the select and the portfolio committee, we offer our condolences to Honorable Franz Galvik and, and her family during this time of need. Uh, we, we also sent our wishes to Honorable Kopane. It has been a long time that she has been ill. Uh, we want speedy recovery for her. Uh, can we then um, ask the GM first maybe to give just an intro before we hand over to, to DG for the two presentations? DM uh, is DM in Nola is DM yes. in yes chair yes, yes chair okay okay good, oh, over to good, you DM good morning good morning uh, honorable chairpersons and the honorable members of both committees um uh, officials, the, the chairpersons of the uh, two bodies that we are having as a department today, um, the CBE and CIDB uh, and the CEOs and all, all other officials supporting them. Uh, allow me to greet uh, everyone uh, this morning. A very good morning. Um, Allow me, Chair, to first join you in um, sending condolences to Honorable Fanny Scalfrey and her family um, to say that uh, we all have to go this route. Um, there's a time for everything. Um, I know that it's, it's tough for them as a family. Um, but they must cherish the moments that they have shared with their grand, um, especially the beautiful moments. But also further wish uh, Honorable Jobo a speedy recovery. Um, Chairperson, allow me to also indicate that our minister is attending uh, the Cabinet Committee on uh, Economic uh, Development, uh, and hence I have uh, joined the, the meeting, but also reminding the honorable members that the entities uh, fall in under my arm uh, in so far as the responsibilities in the department. We are meeting at a time that COVID meeting is really taking its toll on our economies, on our, on our people, uh, on our economy, as well as uh, the world over. But um, we are also meeting here to ensure that uh, that which is spent uh, by government on behalf of taxpayers uh, is, is spent accordingly is spent effectively and efficiently. And these two bodies, CBE and CIDB, that we are coming with uh, to the committee today, are responsible for ensuring that as we uh, in government work to reconstruct our economy uh, and to make strategies that ensure uh, growth, and development, they, 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 they help us in doing so uh, through the mandate that they have, that is to ensure that the professionals as well as the companies under their arm um, are also uh, assisted uh, and are also promoted to be able to uh, um, empower uh, themselves as uh, people, but also ensure a, a contribution to our economic growth. Uh, especially that uh, infrastructure as government uh, through the 
president's state of the nation address has identified infrastructure as the catalyst for development uh, and further economic growth. We require a really capable um, developmental and ethical uh, leadership that is going to help us drive that uh, mandate and ensuring that um, our people's entrepreneurial skills are built in a, are, are, or are supported in a manner that gives uh, hope to South Africans, but more than hope that ensure that we grow uh, as, a, as a country, but also post uh, COVID, even during COVID, um, we, we, we don't dis, dis, dissipate into um, oblivion. And therefore we need uh, that support from them. Uh, they are here, they will be talking for themselves. Uh, yes, through the mouth uh, of the CEOs, but I think the chairpersons are available. Mine is to just say that here we are, chairperson, uh, at your disposal to ensure that uh, there's accountability for every cent uh, spent from the public purse and to share our plans for doing so with yourselves. Uh, I will hand over to, without wasting much time, I will hand over to the, I'm not sure if the DG is in the house, but there are chairpersons of the two bodies with us uh, and they are CEOs. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you, thank you, GM. Uh, let me also acknowledge uh, the presence of the. I don't know why there's an echo, but let me acknowledge the presence of the, the chairpersons of the two entities. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm really sorry that I didn't acknowledge you, and I was acknowledging everyone when we started. Um, thank you, GM. Then. Over to the chairpersons. Uh, I don't know which one is going to start the IBT or the CBE. The CBE was meant to start first, Chair. Okay. Then it might. Uh, Chair, before we start, <clears throat> it's uh, Wayne Thring here. The, yes. the audio on my side is, is horrendous. Um, I'm really struggling to hear. Uh, I don't know whether it's an, just a network problem, um, but I haven't experienced this bad audio in, uh, in all of the previous meet, virtual meetings that we've had, but it's, I'm really struggling to hear on my side. I, I also have a challenge, Honorable Fring, uh, of an echo. I don't know where is it coming from, but there's an echo on my side. I, I, I appeal to all members to switch off their mic while the small is presenting. I think I think it will assist us. If we can do that, switch off the mics of those that are not presenting and allow the presenter uh, to present. But Chair, if you allow me a word of advice, if it is persistent, one can get out and reconnect again. It, it does help because sometimes it's the line that you, uh, you are connected to. Okay. Can uh, you... Yes. Yeah, Chapesin, um, I will start CBEJ. Um, Honorable Chairperson, um, Deputy Minister, Honorable Members of the two committees, um, Chair of CITP, uh, and all officials present, um, good morning. Um, like the Minister has indicated, Chairperson, uh, we are meeting at a time when um, really uh, the um, COVID-19 pandemic um, has um, really um, uh, meant that um, um, we, we, we relook um, at everything uh, uh, that we have been doing. 
and the clarion call um, as articulated uh, by the deputy minister today is that um, um, we shouldn't look at this as um, uh, 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 all doom and gloom, uh, uh, but uh, rather look at it as an opportunity. Um, and the clarion call that uh, we have received uh, uh, from the minister is that uh, um, we should actually look at this as an opportunity to devise uh, an economic recovery strategy um, uh, uh, that leans um, more towards an infrastructure-led economic uh, growth or recovery strategy. And in this vein, Chairperson, um, the stimulation of uh, robust economic growth and job creation are at the core uh, of our strategy going forward. And um, maybe um, uh, just to um, 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 uh, summarize maybe um, in, in terms of um, what would be detailed by uh, our CEO, uh, we have aligned our transformation pro uh, 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 program of action uh, with the principal uh, strategic government uh, goals uh, of economic transformation and, and job creation. Uh, secondly, um, we, have, uh, we, we, we are setting uh, out to build uh, the capacity uh, of the state, uh, promote active citizenry of the built environment, uh, whilst um, at top of the agenda, especially in this era of uh, 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 the post-COVID-19 epoch, um, ensure that uh, uh, the public uh, interest is pro protected uh, above all. And finally, Chairperson, um, while we uh, pledge uh, to remain uh, focused on the leading, uh, on, on, on actually uh, leading, uh, regulating, which is at the core of our mandate, uh, advising and coordinating. Uh, is that the speaker, please? Chair, can we have the, the presentation on the screen, if we may, please, so that we can follow where the speaker is? No, I'm just making remarks. This, the, the presentation, uh, Honorable Chair, as, as we have indicated, um, will be done by the CEOs. Um, oh, so basically. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so basically, what I, what what I was saying is, um, 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 fundamental to our mandate uh, of regulating, advising, coordinating uh, um, the work of uh, all the uh, six uh, built environment councils and all strategic uh, partners that fall under the umbrella of the CPE. Uh, we are cautious of the fact that um, uh, what we have um, uh, all along been uh, accustomed to as being the normal, uh, uh, it has to change because uh, probably uh, most of the uh, uh, circumstances that we find ourselves in uh, are as a result of um, uh, inefficiencies um, um, that um, have uh, come about as a result of um, uh, what we've been accustomed to. So we have to embrace uh, a new normal uh, going forward, and our strategy uh, is is uh, articulated uh, and, and crafted along those lines. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, can the CEO then come in? Thank you, thank you, Chair, um, for 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 your uh, introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, good morning to Honorable Members, the Deputy Minister, uh, Chairperson of CBE, and the Chair of uh, CIDB, and my colleagues. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to come and present our strategic plan for financial year 2020-21 to 20, 2024 to uh, 2025. Um, I'm going to be doing this presentation, Chairperson, if you allow me, together with my uh, colleagues. I will have uh, Ms. Lindy Janssen van Fieren, who is the Chief uh, Financial Officer. I will also be having the Chief Operations Officer, Mr. Mohema Mungane. They are going to help me as I'm doing this uh, presentation. What I will be focusing on as the CEO is just uh, our, our strategy. Uh, when we go through our slides, 
the slide number two, it uh, shows the content of our presentation. We will discuss uh, the mandate of the CBE. We will look at the strategic focus of the CBE, the situational analysis, which looks at both external and internal environment. We'll also be looking at the, we will also be looking at the interventions, the key interventions and outputs, the medium term expenditure framework estimates, the annual performance plan, uh, where we will look at our financials, and then we'll also lastly look at our programs uh, for the next uh, five years. So the mandate of the CBE uh, chairperson is enshrined on our constitution, uh, the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. There are key principles that uh, underpin our mandate. The first one is that of the high standard of professional ethics that must be promoted and maintained, efficient economic and effective use of resources uh, that must be promoted, public administration that must be development-oriented, services that must be provided impartially, fairly, equ equitably, and without bias, and the people's needs that must be responded to, and the public that must be encouraged to participate in policy making. And then lastly, the public administration that must be accountable. When we look at our legislative mandate as per the Council for the Built Environment Act 43 of 2000, we are looking at these key areas. Chairperson, I just want to highlight that the, CBE, the, the key role of the CBE is uh, to play the oversight role over the six councils. We did not include them in, in this slide, but if you can allow me to just uh, highlight them. Uh, their key uh, responsibility is to register the, 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 the professionals that are operating within the built environment. These professionals are key in, in delivering the infrastructural projects that we, we have in our country. So these uh, councils, they register the professionals that are within this, uh, the following fields, engineering, landscape architecture, architecture, property valuers, pro project and construction management, and then the last, the, the last one, the, the quantity surveying. So these are our key uh, professionals that we are working with. But uh, we also we have extended our relationship to the town planners because we also understand that they are key, although currently they are not part of the fold under the CBE, but we have signed the memorandum of understanding with them because we believe that it is important for us to, to, to work together. Uh, I think the key area, uh, the key focus is, is around the issues of collaboration. So slide five, uh, Chair, it looks at our mandate. I want to highlight that these are our concurrent functions that we do together with the, the, the six councils for the built environment uh, professions. The first one, which is critical, is to promote and protect the interest of the public in the built environment. I think this is critical, especially during this time of uh, COVID-19. The second one is to promote and maintain a sustainable built environment and a natural, natural environment. The third one is to promote ongoing human resource development in the built environment. It's followed by uh, facilitating participation by the built environment professions in integrated development in the context of national goals. And uh, the sixth one is to promote appropriate standards of health, safety, and environment, environmental protection within the built environment. This one, Chair, is also critical uh, during this time that we are in. Uh, the seventh one is to promote liaison in the built environment in the field of training, both in the Republic and elsewhere, and to promote the standard of such training within the, uh, within the Republic. And then the eighth one, it is uh, to serve as a forum where the representatives of built environment professions may discuss relevant uh, issues. There are so many issues uh, 
that are uh, challenging the, the, the professionals. But as much as there are challenging issues, but they, they, they are also coming up with solutions to these uh, challenging uh, uh, situations. So as a result, it is important for the CBE and the councils to create those plat platforms so that we might have meaningful discussions. And then the last one is to ensure a uniform application of norms uh, and guidelines that are set by the professional councils throughout the built environment. So Chairperson, these are the, the, the key areas uh, of our mandate as the CBE together with the councils. So when we look at our institu institutional policies and strategies for over the, the period of five years that we are planning for, we are saying we need, as the CBE, we need to, to look at uh, the business uh, value re-engineering. Uh, I think as the chairperson has said that from here, it's, it's not, uh, we, we cannot continue as a uh, business as usual. We need to re-strategize, we need to see and, and, and look at how we can capacitate ourselves so that we are able to, 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 to deal with the challenges that are coming up. And then the second one is the industrial operational transformation. Transformation is key to our, to our mandate. Uh, and then transformation does not only happen within the CBE and the six councils, but it is, it, it, it is implemented or it is executed uh, within our voluntary associations who are responsible for the implementation of the projects. And then the third one is skills cap uh, capability and capacity development to transcend uh, our 2035 uh, built environment vision. And then the fourth one is research and advisory role. We have a, a role to play in terms of advising the minister, advising other ministers uh, on the issues that are relating to the built environment. And then the last one is talking to the issues of regulation and uh, the public uh, protection. Uh, when we did our strategy and our APP, we, we did not do this in, in, in vacuum. First of all, we engaged with the department. We are also participating in their strategic uh, planning uh, sessions. So whatever that we are doing, it, we, we, we made sure that it is aligned to national priorities, uh, government outcomes, and the, uh, the department outcomes. So every one of our outcomes, it is aligned to these uh, key areas. So slide uh, number uh, seven, it, it's just a show uh, how, we are, how we are aligned to those uh, priorities of the government. But when we go to slide eight, it is a, a simplified version of the picture that you saw on slide seven. So when we developed the CBE outcomes, we ensured that we are aligned to the department, uh, to the department's outcome. The first one is a, an optimum functioning CBE. We cannot be able to change our, envi our environment if we are not a capacitated as the CBE. So we have to make sure that our processes are aligned correctly. Our processes are able to bring about the change that we desire. So this is aligned to the public works and infrastructure outcome, which is a resilient, ethical and capable uh, department. And then the national development plan implementation plan outcomes is an ethical, efficient operations and effective accountability mechanisms. And then this one, it is aligned to the government priority, which is priority number six, which talks to a capable, ethical, and a developmental state. The second one uh, of our outcomes is a transformed built environment. This is nicely aligned to the department's uh, outcome, which is also talking to a transformed built environment. And then the national, uh, the, the, the national priority is priority one, which is economic transformation and job creation. And then the third uh, outcome of the CBE is a skilled built environment professionals. So this one, it is aligned to the uh, department's uh, transformation built and transform, uh, transformed 
built environment and then it is aligned to the priority two of the of, of, of the of the government which is education skills and health the fourth one it is linked to our research because we cannot be able to advise uh, the government if we don't have uh, information so whatever decision that we take we, we have to make sure that it, it is an informed decision so that we are able to, to not to make uh, mistakes when we are advising the, 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 the government. So this outcome is an informed decision making which impacts the current and the future operational requirements of the industry. It is aligned to priority six of the government. And then the last one, it's, uh, it talks to the public interest in the built environment. Uh, that we have to ensure that it is promoted uh, uh, within uh, the, our country. So this is critical, Chairperson. I know that uh, in the past, CBE has not been uh, playing uh, uh, much in this place, in, in this space, but we feel that it is important that we market ourselves to our communities so that whatever that is happening, the, the misconduct of our professionals they are able to report back to the councils and to the CBE. So this is one area that we want to, to elevate uh, uh, during this uh, five-year strategic plan. Uh, Chairperson, our, we have re-looked at our vision and mission. So our vision, uh, the new vision, is an, is an intelligent, inclusive, adaptive, and thriving built environment by the year 2035. Our mission is that we want to be the lead, or we are the lead, we want to lead, regulate, advise, and coordinate professionals and their councils to meet the national built environment and transformation future of the industry. This uh, mission, Chairperson, it is uh, it's different from our past uh, mission. And then our brand promise is building South Africa's future through infrastructure development. And our values is quality is non-negotiable, professionalism in all that we do. We are future-oriented, all-round inclusiveness. This one especially is talking to our transformation agenda. And then, as I've mentioned, that we did the, the situational analysis, we looked at the external environment uh, factors. What's critical here, Chairperson, which I think it is also the current situation, is the, is, is the challenges that are faced by our construction uh, sector. Currently, there is an outcry that the, uh, the economy is affecting, the, or the state of the, of the economy, is affecting our construction sector. As much as we are happy that the construction sector is employing 8% of the country's uh, labor force, but after COVID-19, Chairperson, things might change. Uh, when we prepared this uh, strategy, we, we, it, it, the situation was that uh, the construction outputs account it, it accounts for about 4% of uh, the GDP. Again, we don't know where we are at the, uh, at, the present, at the present moment. Things will change. So these uh, uh, situations, Chairperson, they have a, a negative impact on our programs because we depend on the companies to assist us to transform the industry. We have the unemployed young people which must be employed by our, by our industry. So if our industry is not performing well, it means the, 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 the rate of uh, the, the, the unemployment within our youth will remain as it is now, which uh, during the time when we were pre preparing this, it was at 54.7%. So it is a little bit uh, worrying. Uh, and also some of our program, they depend on our uh, professionals uh, having actively uh, participating within the, the, the economy. So they cannot mentor the candidates, for example, if, they, if their companies are not functioning well. So all the, 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 the decline in our economy, 
chairperson, it has a, a, a negative impact on the programs that we have as the CBE and, and, and the councils. But uh, chairperson, on a positive note, we know that the government has set aside a, a budget to, for infrastructural uh, projects. So we are hoping that, especially after the lockdown, we will uh, re-energize our, our, our economy through infrastructure, infrastructural projects. So then our candidates will be able to participate in this space. When it comes to uh, our technology, I'm on slide 13, Chair. Where we are currently, we see that we have been pushed into using uh, the, 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 the technology. And, uh, Chair, I, I, I'm worried at the pace of the presenter, given the time that you have outlined. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable. Uh, my man, I, I, I asked Unola <clears throat> to, to communicate with the DDG. As I indicated earlier on, that we are allowing only this hour from 9 to 10 for the presentations. Uh, uh, so, Miss, Miss Priscilla, please uh, uh, round up. Remember, okay. we, we, we had the information. Uh, yes. Sent to us, yeah, uh, before. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Perhaps then, can I allow the the, the 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 COO to take us through the our APP targets? Chairperson. Yes, you must continue. Okay. Okay. On the uh, on the situational analysis, uh, Chairperson, I'm um, talking about the technology that we need to upskill our professionals, especially looking at where we are. We have to use our technology. We have to upskill ourselves in terms of so that we are able to run our businesses, even if we are not in our offices. And then on the legal matters, Chairperson, you look at the slide, uh, the, the minister's slide, uh, slide 22 where she is talking about uh, the areas where she has tasked us to do. So as CBE, we are going to look at the, the legislative uh, issues that are impacting uh, our industry, but they are also impacting our councils. So this is one of the areas that we are going to be uh, focusing on going forward. Chairperson, I request that uh, I give uh, the, 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 the COO the opportunity to go through the APP. So he's going to look at the slide from slide 23. Uh, he's also going to summarize uh, our presentation. COO, you can come in. Thank you very much, you're my being heard. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair, uh, Honourable Members, uh, Honourable uh, Minister, Honourable Deputy Minister, uh, Chairpersons and all colleagues. So I think in view of the time, I'm going to uh, try to, to uh, summarise as quick as possible. Uh, so if you can go to slide 23, please, uh, CEO. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, various programs. So, so in line with the uh, strategy for the next five years, uh, the CBE has established uh, the following various programs. And there's essentially five of these programs. Uh, the first one, of course, is administration, and it deals with uh, the CBE's business value re-engineering. Uh, the second one is transformation, and it deals with the industry operational uh, transformation at large. The, the third one is really the skills and capacity development. Uh, to transcend into the 2035 CBE vision. And uh, the, the fourth one is research and advisory role of CBE. And uh, of course, the, the last one is regulations and uh, public protection of CBE. So in terms of uh, the, the first one, uh, looking over at uh, slide number uh, 25, uh, in terms of the first one here, program one, so as indicated, uh, this program deals with the, the business of value re-engineering. And, and in particular, it aims to ensure that uh, CBE is in the best shape 
to really achieve its goals as stipulated in the strategic plan. Now, in line with this purpose, uh, we have essentially three specific projects uh, that we want to uh, uh, utilize to, to achieve this goal. Uh, the first, we want to develop uh, a high level uh, and sub business processes so that we optimize uh, the business processes internally. And then secondly, we want to revise organizational design and structure. I want to make sure that this is actually speaking to the strategy that we've developed. And then, of course, uh, thereafter, we want to make sure that we, we develop a cloud a strategic plan that includes the Internet of Things and that also includes fourth industrial revolution. So here what we want to do, we want to use technology to achieve uh, the uh, maximum efficiency and effectiveness of, uh, of, of our strategy. So I'll jump straight then to the next slide. Here we're talking essentially to the key risk and mitigating uh, mitigation measures. So I won't go too much into details as far as that is concerned. Uh, looking at uh, slide number 26 here, we, uh, this is still under program one. Uh, we also aim here to promote awareness about CBE and uh, its functions to all relevant stakeholders. Uh, as per our analysis, it showed that CBE is not really uh, known by many, uh, the public and by many stakeholders. So we want to address that issue in essence. And then uh, if I can go straight then to program two. Uh, program two here, uh, as indicated, this deals with transformation. Now, under this slide, slide number 31, uh, at the grand scheme of things, what we want to uh, do here, we want to ensure that inclusive and equitable participation takes place. Uh, this means that we want to ensure that the demographics of belt environment professionals should, in effect, reflect that of the country. And this is in terms of gender, in terms of uh, race, in terms of disability, and in terms of age. So we want to make sure that uh, belt environment professionals that are registered, the, the demographics reflect those of the country. And then in terms of uh, slide, uh, slide 30, 33, uh, what we want to do then, we're going to develop, in essence, a broad-based long-term transformation strategy for the built environment that really cater for all such, uh, such issues as highlighted. And then uh, uh, moving over to the next slide, uh, slide 34 on, on mine. Uh, another initiative here, and this is really what we do on an annual basis, it involves our hosting uh, the National Transformation Endeavor and also 16 collaborative forums. This we do on an annual basis, and this really provides a platform that aims to holistically address all transformation issues uh, in the country. And really the key uh, risk here that I think is worthy of indicating, of, of highlighting, is sometimes we have inadequate participation by relevant stakeholders in this uh, transformation endeavors in, the, in this transformation process. And that, that's really the key risk that we want to uh, mitigate to ensure that we achieve success holistically. Moving over to program three, uh, if we could move over to this slide. Uh, in terms of program three, uh, as we indicated, program three deals with skills and capacity development. Now, this program aims to ensure that we have enough built environment professionals to adequately meet the current and future infrastructure needs of the country. So we want to make sure that in terms of built environment professionals, we have enough architects registered professionally. We have enough engineers, we have enough landscape architects, project and construction managers, property valuers and quantity surveyors, as well as uh, others, including um, the town planners, landscape surveyors, and uh, facility managers, etc. So in order to do that, uh, this requires a well-coordinated skills development pipeline, starting from school level to professional level. So if we want to make sure that we have professionals, of course, we must start from school level where we have enough students doing math and science, uh, and then they must venture into the built environment professions, they must pass those, they must go through the candidacy where they're developed to be professionals, getting experience in the field, and then registering as professionals under the six uh, professional bodies. So that's in essence what we want to do. And very quickly, if you're looking at uh, the slide uh, 38, uh, we see some of the, uh, the programs here that we'll be following. Uh, so we're going to have a throughput study. We're going to facilitate and monitor the implementation of the structured candidacy framework. We will have career awareness to ensure that uh, uh, learners come into these uh, professions. We will also undertake our accreditation uh, accordingly. And then moving quickly then into program, uh, 
uh, program four, uh, I'll also summarize here, uh, program four under slide 42. Uh, under this slide here, we we actually uh, have, uh, we, as we indicated, program four deals with the CBE research and advisory mandate as per the legislation. So here we want a CBE to lead and centralize all built environment research in the country so that uh, the CBE is able to provide advice to government or any on any built environment issue. And then CBE will be able to then inform policies uh, on a national scale uh, in this regard. Anything that has to do with the built environment, CBE should be in a position to advise. So to do this, uh, we will establish a shared research agenda to inform the, uh, the research. We will also establish a functional built environment research hub. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that we partner and collaborate with all the research institutions in the country, whether it's universities, it's uh, universities of technology, TVET, or any other research institution, so that all the research that they do on built environment is centralized in one place. So the CBE will establish a functional built environment research hub uh, to, to, to centralize that information. And then thereafter, based on the available and conducted scientific research, on an annual basis, we will uh, produce advisory reports to government uh, in that regard. So the key risk here, and I think this is very important, is essentially just copyright issues when it comes to some of the research that's not conducted internally, but that's conducted by our partners. And here we will follow the academic standards as stipulated by the respective research institutions to make sure that we mitigate that. Moving over to slide 44 and 45, uh, we're now uh, looking at uh, slide 45, please. Uh, we're looking at uh, program five. So under program five, we said that program five addresses the CBE's regulatory mandate as well as its mandate to protect the public. So uh, CBE is essentially mandated to protect the public from things such as poor quality and workmanship by any of our professionals, uh, from the environmental issues, uh, by the infrastructure that our professionals uh, are construct and erect, and also from health and safety risks uh, when the construction uh, is taking place, and also, of course, from excessive pricing from any of our professionals. So that's what we mean when we say that we are meant to protect the public from those issues. And then to do this, uh, we do this, of course, by hearing the appeals lost by the public uh, that we handle uh, uh, as they come. So under this program, we, we have the following projects, uh, a project to recommend updates to on the belt environment legislation. And we also have a project to finalize the lost appeals uh, within the statutory 60 days. So that is, in essence, then, the... Uh, uh, the programs that uh, CBE intends to undertake in this regard. Uh, those are the five programs, and we believe that those will then help us as far as uh, our aim to uh, achieve our strategic objectives as set out for the next five years and our APP yeah. targets for the year 10. Uh, thank okay. you very much. I think I'll stop here. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairperson, let, let us just stop there and allow the members to, 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 to ask questions because you do have uh, the presentation with you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, um, um, CEO. Uh, but we must raise our concern. You did not uh, respect the time that we gave you. We are going to receive now the presentation from CIBT. And we expect them to respect the time. When I started the meeting, I indicated that we are only giving you this hour between 9 and 10 for the presentations, um, both presentations, so that you allow us enough time to interact with the presentation. This presentation is prepared by you. So the time that we want from you is for you to explain when we ask questions. So I will then now hand over to Chairperson. Uh, please be very brief in your intro, Chairperson, uh, and then hand over to CEO. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Um, Chair of the CIDB, uh, uh, Chair of the CPP, CEO, and colleagues. 
Um, good morning, and I'm sorry that the meeting under these times where we are not able to interact on a face-to-face -face, um, basis. Uh, this unprecedented times, and I'm not going to waste too much uh, time of the uh, long introduction, except that um, chairperson, the strategy in the APP work ahead in, in, in collaboration with the department, and uh, we thank them for the leadership. Um, obviously, a lot has changed, and a lot will be changing based on where we are with COVID-19, and obviously the session that we went into just prior to COVID-19. So obviously, these two items will very much impact on our budget uh, going forward. So we're worried about that, but obviously, as the board, we're looking at that quite closely um, in terms of how uh, we do our work and uh, what do we collect and whether that put us at risk uh, or not. And if, if, if there are these issues, obviously we will quickly escalate this, this issue um, to, the, to the minister and the minister as uh, we have always been doing. Thank you very much. I'll hand over to the CEO. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, Honourable Chairperson, uh, Honourable De Deputy Minister, uh, Honourable Members of the two Houses, uh, Chairpersons of, of CIDP and CBE uh, colleagues, uh, I do have a very short time to present and therefore I will summarise uh, in some uh, of the areas. Now if you look at the presentation layout, uh, I will just give the vision because it actually shows us what our mandate is uh, and then also deal a lot with the impact uh, and outcomes uh, on the strategic plan and then on the annual performance plans uh, look at outputs and targets finally, fi and finally look uh, at the budget. All right, the, the first slide, let me just... Um, a comment that is a slide uh, that has been sent to us by the department uh, to include in our presentation. Uh, they will expand uh, on the slide, but uh, I would like to just uh, mention a few things uh, in terms of progress in some of the areas. Uh, we see that this act uh, is 20 years old, uh, and in the preamble of the minister uh, in our strategic plan, uh, she notes that uh, certain things uh, have been overtaken by events because of the lapse of time. And uh, the minister has uh, assured us that uh, the act will be revised and we are currently uh, working with the department in making sure that the, the act is being amended uh, and it's up to date so that it can enable us to do all the things uh, we want to do. Uh, in terms of the alignment of uh, priorities, uh, which is the first uh, bullet point, uh, I can say that the CIDB uh, strategic plan uh, is well aligned uh, with uh, the department as well as uh, the national development plan, uh, as well as taking care of the issues of uh, empowerment skills, transfer of, uh, transfer of skills, women, youth. Where we are lacking, we are lacking on the issues of persons with dis disabilities, and that's what we will be working on. Uh, the second last slide is about linkages. Uh, I will show that in slide six and seven, there is good linkage between the department and ourselves. Um, the last one, which is determining the best practice for the construction industry, uh, that process is actually underway. Uh, Sorry, that process is underway. Uh, we have developed some regulations uh, in that regard, and uh, currently uh, the department is about to uh, approve those uh, 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 regulations, uh, which will enable us uh, to perform even better in this space. Now, I will look now at the vision and mission because it, it firmly shows us where CIDP is uh, grounded. Uh, if you look at the vision, we are saying that uh, we want a transformed construction industry that is inclusive. 
So in other words, we are noting that the, historically, the industry has been exclusive and we want to make it inclusive. And we also want an ethical uh, construction industry which contributes to the prosperity of South Africa. Now, the mission is really to develop construction industry through regulation. And we are also uh, ensuring that we have strategic interventions and partnerships because more often than not, uh, we actually influence some of the things which happens in the industry, but we don't directly uh, uh, do those things, like the awarding of projects, but we, 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 we influence uh, the processes. So uh, our, our legislative mandate is really to provide that strategic leadership uh, in the construction industry. Now, the, 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 the second, the second uh, slide is really about alignment, uh, that we are aligned with uh, the uh, uh, NDP, uh, with the three pillars, which is inclusive economic growth, uh, capabilities of South Africa, uh, and a capable state uh, through the, uh, uh, the skills development uh, in the industry. We are also aligned with the seven-point plan, uh, which are also applicable to the department. And that is really how we derive our strategic plan as our strat and, and, and our uh, uh, APP. Now, we are showing here the alignment uh, in, in, in terms of the table. So if you look at CID impacts, there are two areas which want to have impact. It's a transformed and a developed industry. And then on the other hand, we want to have an ethical and a performance-driven industry. That is aligned uh, uh, with the outcomes which are in our strategic plan and APP, as well as the DPWI uh, outcomes, uh, and as well as the priorities in the, eight, in the uh, NDP, as well as the, the, the outcomes thereof. Now, to just summarize the pillars which we have, uh, we, we actually have transformation, we have development, and we have performance, and then we have ethics. That's really what underpins uh, how we actually operate. I'm not really going to delve into the details of transformation development, uh, because you actually have them there in detail. Right, in terms of, in terms of the impact statement, as I said, it's a transformed and a development industry. Uh, and the second one, second impact is ethical, is ethical and uh, performance driven industry. Now, there is a diagram here. In fact, whatever we do, it's centered on transformation. Now, let me complete this diagram in, instead of uh, having it piecemeal uh, so that we can understand uh, the linkages. Now, the most important part is that the most important part, sorry, of this diagram is that transformation is at the center, but that transformation can happen only if there is infrastructure expenditure. So the infrastructure expenditure is something we encourage that uh, our the client uh, departments should be able to spend their budgets uh, so that there will be infrastructure expenditure. And in that manner, uh, the emerging sector uh, will then participate uh, in that infrastructure spend, and by participating, there will be an increase in capabilities of the emerging sector. You can only develop because you are practically engaging yourself in those construction projects. Uh, that's our belief as CITP, how we actually move forward. Now, in terms of the outcomes which are supporting the desired impacts, uh, we are zooming a, a, little, a little bit into more detail. Uh, a transformed and a development industry, what we want to do is to make sure that there is an increase in black ownership and participation in the construction industry. The second one is the increase of women and youth ownership participation in the construction industry, as well as contractor development to make sure that those contractors who are emerging, uh, they don't become emerging forever. At some stage, they also rise up to grades eight and nine, and they are in leadership roles. Uh, in terms of the ethical performance and driven industry, 
uh, what we want to make sure is that our, the clients are performance driven, the way they, they, they put their projects together uh, and, and, and we also help them in, in, in making sure that there are structures in place to manage performance. Um, also, we want to reduce non-compliance and fraud. That is one of the bugbears of the construction industry, uh, which we deal with. Now, just still uh, on that part, I think it's very important to note that it's important that the legislation is improved because as CIDP, the maximum fine we can uh, uh, give is only 100,000 because uh, that has not been changed uh, since the, the legislation started. But if it's a multi-billion project, uh, a person would rather uh, be non-compliant uh, but just pay a, 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 a 100,000 fine. However, we can also remove the person from uh, the register, but in terms of the fine, I don't think that it's in line with the changes in time. Uh, and then also as CIDP, we want to make sure that ourselves as an organization, we are ethical, and then we are also a uh, performance driven uh, in that regard. Now, these are the details in terms of measurements and baselines. I'm not going to go uh, into that, but they are actually then the details from uh, the previous slides uh, in terms of how they will be measured. Now, I will then move to the annual uh, performance plan. Uh, in the annual performance plan, there is also a slide uh, from the department, uh, which uh, also the department will expand more on this slide, but I would like to just have a, 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 a some com one comment or two. Now on the first uh, on the first uh, bullet point, uh, we note that uh, in the past there has been uh, challenges uh, with uh, the register. Uh, there has been uh, quite a great improvement, uh, but there was a block backlog which was created last year because of a strike which happens towards the end of last year. And also right at the end of last year, uh, CIDP implemented a, a new uh, IT system uh, and there are teething problems which are related to that. But uh, all the other details like VEE, they are part of the, the, the register, uh, but we are sort of catching up with some of the backlogs. And then on the second uh, bullet point, uh, the, the, there is a note that CITB must now uh, register, uh, uh, have a register of professionals. Uh, we will oblige uh, in terms of that because it's provided for in the Act. Uh, and currently one of the challenges is that the Act, if you actually look at the Act, uh, it says we may, so it's not compulsory. Uh, we are very happy that uh, the ministry is going to help us to make it compulsory uh, so that we can reduce the resistance uh, in that regard going forward. Uh, in terms of uh, mainstreaming uh, EPWP with the department, uh, we will be engaging with the department uh, as they are giving us direction uh, going forward. Now, in terms of how CITP is structured, we have uh, programs uh, which will help us to deliver. Program one and six is really administration, uh, head office, and, and our, our provinces. We are represented in all the provinces so that we are accessible uh, to our customers. Now, the other programs uh, we have is research and development to make sure that uh, it helps us in moving forward and we have got construction industry regulation, which is a core function that we must regulate the industry. And then we've got construction industry performance, uh, where we want to increase the performance of the construction industry uh, on behalf of the clients. And we've got procurement and development. Uh, we note that uh, for the industry to be efficient, you need to make sure that the procurement processes are developed properly and they are clear. Uh, and we work with the tre Treasury uh, in that regard, making sure that uh, we improve those procurement processes. Now, then going forward, we're also then talking about the details of what we measure, like the increased black ownership participation, 
and how it relates to the different pro pro uh, uh, programs. I'm not going to go into detail there because that is really the detail of how we actually measure those things uh, and make sure that uh, they are achieved uh, in the APP. Uh, lastly is our medium term expenditure estimates. Uh, we are having an increasing budget uh, but really the budget is not drastically increasing, it's a manageable budget uh, and we have recently uh, 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 reorganized the organization and, 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 and that's, that budget uh, also includes uh, the reorganization uh, of the organization. Right, thank you very much uh, Chair. Uh, I hope I was able to be uh, within uh, your time frame. Then we can take questions. Thank you. Um, I don't know whether you can see me, uh, members. Uh, yeah, fine. Um, I am now, uh, let's appreciate the presentations, both presentations. And, and the the intro by the by the chairpersons of, of both entities. Uh, I am then now. I am going to call upon members. If you are fine, you can just indicate that you are fine. You don't want to speak. But I'm going to call everyone who is here, with the exceptions of those that have submitted e apologies. Uh, Honourable Tring, Honourable Hicklin, Honourable Priam. Honorable Siwisa, if three minutes. Honorable Tring, Honorable Hicklin, Honorable Graham, Honorable Siwisa. Are those members in? Yeah, chair. Chair, yes. yes. Honorable. Tring, you are the first one, followed by Honorable Hicklin, followed by Honorable Graham, and then Honorable Siwisa. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, let me then start with the uh, questions that I have for the uh, CIDB. Uh, one of the strategic direction points of the CIDB uh, is development. And under this focus point is the goal of raising the capabilities and skills of the uh, emerging sector participants. But in this, in this light, um, could I ask CIDB uh, how many apprenticeships have been garnered in the construction sector as a means to increase capacity and, and skill? So the first question is with regards to uh, apprenticeships and how many apprenticeships have been garnered. Second question is, uh, we all know that because of COVID-19, the, uh, the budget presented is, is going to change. Um, which budget sectors do you anticipate uh, being amended and, and why would these be amended uh, in anticipation of, of the budget ch change? Then uh, slide 33 shows that research and development equals some uh, 3.6 of the total budget, 3.6% of the total budget. Research and development ought to be at the cutting edge um, of the CIDB. And uh, if we are to up our game and keep ahead of the pack, research and development is, is a key program. Uh, so I would want you to ask if you agree with this, and uh, if so, what will be done to improve the uh, this sector or the budget program? Uh, <clears throat> then, chair for the uh, the CBE. First question is: uh, There's an obvious disconnect when one looks at slides 14 and 15 with respect to the uh, registration status of the uh, built environment professionals, 73% white, uh, and the current status of the candidates in the register of councils, 60% uh, black. Uh, can you explain uh, why this is so? Uh, then second question, the medium term expenditure framework estimates uh, are given in, in thousands. Um, so if one looks at the 
if one looks at the slide, um, it's given in thousands of rands. Obviously, this is not correct. Um, so we don't see, you know, the whether it's millions or billions. Uh, but I think that one needs to ensure that when we are given information, it's it's given as as being correct. I'm, I'm assuming that it's in the millions, um, the estimates that were given to us. Uh, and then my my last question, Chair, is that slide 25. Uh, under the annual targets set as a target, which includes the uh, the information or the Internet of Things, IoT, and the fourth industrial revolution uh, initiatives. My question simply is, uh, does this include uh, these targets, which are re with regards to the Internet of Things and fourth industrial revolution? Um, does this does this include the rollout rollout of 5G um, and as I understand it, the Internet of Things uh, necessitates the rollout of, of 5G. And if that is the case, um, has there been any health risk assessments in terms of the impact of 5G on employees uh, as well as ordinary citizens? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Frank. Honorable Higlin. Good morning, Chair. Thank you through you. Yes, in the presentation for the CBE on slide 35, you indicated that there, <coughs> pardon me, there was an, uh, an annual transformation in DARBA um, on the 31st of March. Since our oversight visit um, last year, what has the CBE itself done to address the challenges of registration and the transformation of the, the built environment professionals? What measures have been put into place by the CBE to make the process more streamlined? The second question I have again for the CBE relates to slide 40, where we speak about the, the education, the schools program. How have you extended or expanded your program to promote a career in the built environment? We've asked this question before in terms of what schools have been targeted and which schools have been chosen in which provinces. Um, I, I, I am still a little bit unclear about what the criteria are that are used to ascertain which schools are used. And you also talk about an inconsistency in applications for the accreditation process. Is there any way that someone can please explain to me what those um, inconsistencies are and how they're being addressed? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Hello. Chair. Um, I'm on and ready. Um, Chair, my first question is to the CBE. Um, my question is, um, and I've asked this before, and I'm still, I still don't get any, any sense of, of, of the response to this, is what is the value add to the professional bodies? In other words, what is the CBE doing to, to support the professional bodies, and what is their value add to the um, registered professionals? How are we attracting registered professionals? Why would they join these bodies as opposed to other bodies that exist? Um, what incentive is given? I mean, they've, they've even said in the presentation that even government is not using the registered professionals when they are, are doing um, government programs. So why are, we, why are we not finding a way to incentivize the use of our registered professionals so that we can actually increase the amount of people who are registering with this body? The other question I have is around the transformation in DARBA. Um, this obviously costs a fair amount of money. The, the issue raised by the pre presenter was that they are not getting um, enough participation. Is there not another way of addressing transformation um, with the bodies as opposed to just holding an endaba every year, which becomes a talk shop, which really doesn't actually um, um, create any, any good results for, for the transformation initiatives? Um, and then also, I just... Again, I keep talking about the fact that you've got a public works department, you've got entities that exist under it, and yet everybody's working in silos. There are ways that public works as a whole can start to facilitate that all of these entities are actually supporting each other, as opposed to them coming to meetings and saying, well, these are our problems, 
Um, and those problems could actually be addressed by other entities or other other mechanisms within the department to make sure that that you know their their um, outcomes are are being supported. Um, my last question is then to the CIDB. You spoke about the EPT, EPWP program um, for CIDB and for for contractors. What happens is EPWP is a poverty alleviation program. It's not a mental program. It's not a program around, um, you know, um, creating a stepping stone environment for people to emerge out of poverty. They, they merely come to, to a, um, a process, they do the job and they go home. Because of the small stipend that is being paid, we are not attracting um, potentially people who have got a career development path in mind. And we're not attracting people that are ostensibly um, motivated to, to do the work. So you're getting you're getting people who are coming they they're rocking up they they're doing the bare minimum because they're earning the bare minimum. Can we not when we look at this EPT, EPWP program that you're looking at developing look at ways where contractors can come on board they can be part of a facilitation process to identify potential people who can then be stepped up into the construction environment. So people that might not necessarily have had an opportunity to study after school, but then could be developed by a contractor. And this could then be supported by the CIDB to create new people coming into the con construction environment. Thank you very much, Chair. Lord Suisa. Uh, thank you, Chair. And thanks for the presentation. I'm also on the case of the CBA and the transformation in that. Uh, uh, excuse me, Honorable Suisa, please switch on your video. Since, it's yeah, on. Yeah, fine. It's on. All right. Um, when we when we look at the table of of budget allocation on slide twenty. We talk about transformation, but the amount of allocation has gone down. And then we talk about giving people skills. How do you give people skills and yet the transformation is not happening that's supposed to be happening? Presidents of councils have come and put their cases before the committee to say, we are struggling with the following things. And that's when the CBE came up with the idea of the transformation in DAP. But when you look at allocation for transformation, nothing is happening there. Rather, the amount has gone down. So how are you going to address the problem that the CBE and the presidents are having now? Because if you say that people are not coming on board and you've got precedents that can actually bring you people that can come on board to solve the problem that is there. So how are you going to address actually that shortcoming? Because we are still going to have people that are being exploited, exploited and then the shortcomings that are also there. And then we would go to slide 41, CBE, establishment and of a functional research hub. But when you go to your allocation, research and advisory allocation has gone down. How are you going to ex establish a research hub if your advisory and research allocation has gone down? And then quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, nothing is happening there. Any long-term goal needs short-term goals to see if we are on track with everything that's happening. And then we go back, CIDB, and then to 19, uh, financial year 1920, you had three programs. 2021, you've got four programs that you are focusing on. Your budget allocation is the same. You've brought in procurement and development, and you've also focused on your provincial officers with the same budget. Is this thing not going to affect your finances at the later stage? Because we still have contractors that are struggling to get any work from by the assistance of the CIDB. Another question that I need to put forward is, does the CIDB know how many cases of injury on duty 
have been registered and what assistance have been given to those contractors because we know out there there are people that get injured on, on, on sites and then they are being forced to go to work because they are not protected, especially in the rural areas. Does the CIDB have such cases? How many are there and how many have been resolved? Thank you, Chair. Um, um, now it's Honorable Maimang, uh, Honorable Dango, I, I don't know whether is he still with us, uh, Honorable Lont, Honorable Brautesset, that name is very difficult for me. Um, if Honorable Dango has left the meeting, then after no, I'm still here, Chairperson. Oh, oh, you're still here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Then let me let me read the names again. Honorable Maimang, Honorable Dango, Honorable Lont, Honorable Brauteset. In that order. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, start by appreciating the presentation uh, from both the. Uh, councils, uh, but also uh, appreciate the the uh, uh, open remarks that were made by the deputy minister uh, in terms of laying the foundation and ensuring that there is a, a clear alignment between uh, uh, the work that these uh, entities are doing and the work of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Uh, Chair, um, <clears throat> I'm more uh, attracted to the to, to the uh, the work uh, that CIDB is doing, uh, uh, more so in terms of transformation as one of their programs. Uh, <clears throat> and I want to 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 to, to bring the attention to uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, the historically disadvantaged communities. Uh, contractors are still uh, found wanting when it comes to uh, grade uh, nine, grade seven to grade nine, and uh, it's a matter that definitely, uh, from, 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 from my side, uh, I would want uh, to ensure that, uh, uh, in terms of the program highlighted around uh, uh, laying the foundation. Uh, for for that, there has to be much more, much more a rigorous approach in terms of ensuring that uh, uh, our women are able to to to, to be positioned. The young contractors are able to be positioned to ensure that uh, indeed uh, uh, they are better they are better capacitated. But 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 more than that, I think of critical to me also is the is the regist the register of uh, of contractors that is uh, geared towards uh, 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 public sector procurement and promoting contractor development as a key component of the public sector procurement system. I want to propose that uh, uh, from the CIDB side, uh, uh, there is a need to ensure that there is uh, a much more effort in terms of ensuring that uh, uh, the regulations that they spoke to uh, indeed are also uh, expedited, but, 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 but uh, mindful of the fact that it was indicated that they are before the, the table of the public works. But what I want to also raise is, is the fact that uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, downgrading of, uh, of beneficiaries, uh, is the moratorium still on? Uh, because uh, nothing was said about that, but I know that it's a matter that was raised in our last engagement. Uh, the idea is to ensure that uh, uh, as, 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 as we normalize the situation, we are also able to, 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 to uh, relook in terms of uh, the, the, the revision. Uh, nothing was said about the revision of the, uh, of, of the, of the tender value upward uh, from 200 to 500,000. Can we just get a sense in terms of uh, in terms of our last engagement? Is there progress with regard to that? 
Uh, but I think more than that, I think what is critical to me will be uh, uh, the, the district development model. I'm mindful of the fact that uh, uh, the, uh, the CIDB has a history of uh, working with uh, the district municipalities, working with the local municipalities, working with the uh, metro, metro uh, municipalities. I think what is critical is uh, what is it that we are going to do to be able to ensure that uh, we up we up the game as part of our attending the situation around using the infrastructure development to transform the economy. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Dango. Uh, Chairperson, I'm covered. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Dango. Honorable Lawrence. Honorable Sets. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, clearly. Honorable Thank you, Chair. Chair, if I may just begin by complimenting you. <clears throat> You're right, I have a very difficult surname and you said it perfectly. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm, my, my family is originally from Norway, so I have these, these strange Viking names. <laughs> anyway, um, so, Chair, I just want to quickly just touch on CBE and uh, CIBB, if I may, um, and, and I'll do it very briefly. Um, on slide 26 of the CBE presentation, there is a reference to a hotline where people can report um, fraud or irregular expenditure, whatever the case may be. I understand that the entity can't give us these details now, but I'm sure that both committees would be very interested in knowing over, let's say, the last year, how many calls were received by that hotline um, and what action was taken on those calls. Um, because it's easy to say we have a hotline, but if, if no action is taken or if there's no concomitant action on whatever comes in the hotline, it frankly is a bit of a waste of time. I'm sure we all will agree. Um, then on slide 30 of the CBE uh, presentation, it refers to uh, a risk mitigation in terms of uh, cutting down on irregular expenditure and fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And what I found concerning was, as it said, that uh, pro procurement procedures to be developed. I found it very concerning that in 2020, many, many years after the passing of the PFMA, the CBE is considering what procurement procedures to develop. Uh, the, MF, the PFMA sets down procurement procedures very clearly. Numerous, you know, instruction notes from Treasury over the year sets down those those procedures. So, can we just get clarity on what that means? I mean, is, is CB only working on their procurement procedures now, or just some sort of an idea of what, where we're going there? Then on slides 35 through to 39, there obviously we talk about transformation, which everyone in this committee agrees is incredibly important um, to, to, to scale up uh, members of our society. Has CBE, has CBE um, considered the idea of apprenticeships and then engaging with SARS to find out whether companies that give such apprenticeships to skill up engineers, construction uh, people, etc., 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 in the built environment to give them some sort of a tax credit for offering apprenticeships, um, for, 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 for actively skilling up people in the sector so that we can churn out a good uh, coterie of, of, of really sharp people who know what they're doing in the built environment. That was on CBE chair. Then on um, CIDB, this is a drum I've been beating for a while. On slide nine, it refers to uh, a risk mitigation of quality and cost efficiency. Now, this is just a quick question there. CRDB obviously wants to place operators on certain grades so they can handle certain jobs, and that is commendable. We all agree with that. My concern is, is that we all know that on the ground, 
there are a lot of people that get given work and then either just take the money and don't complete the work, take the deposits, don't, and the, the upfront money and then just run away. And CIDB seems to think that in my past engagements, that once they approve somebody to do certain work and then they don't perform, that it is the problem of the client, the client municipality, the client department, the client whoever. And I just want to urge again that CRDB should surely have some sort of a, a list where they place the bad actors in the industry on that list. So where somebody gets the opportunity to do work and then they don't perform, they don't operate, they don't do as they're supposed to do, that they get placed on some sort of a, a list, some sort of a, a red flagging list, whatever you want to call it, that says that these guys are bad actors and they should not be given the opportunity again. I really want CRDB to to not just stand back and say, well, it's not our problem, the client department must must, uh, must sort that out. CRDB, if they are pushing these people forward, if they're pushing these South Africans forward to do the work, must surely say, well, we recruited them, we will take action against them as well. And then finally, just on on the on, on slide ten, I'm I'm done now, chair. On slide ten of the uh, of the <clears throat> a, a statement of, about ethics on the CRDB um, presentation is made. And it says the industry has low levels of fraud and corruption. Chair, with all due respect, surely that is a false statement. <clears throat> There's no ways that this industry, the construction industry in South Africa, has low levels of fraud and corruption. Surely that's impossible. And if they can just, if CRDB can just explain that, fraud and corruption is manifest right across this industry of folks who take money, run away, take money, subcontract to someone else, get inferior work. That's why roads fall apart. That's why. That's why our built environment falls apart, simply because we do have lots of fraud and corruption going on. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> then um, we will have Honorable Chaku, Honorable Shabalala, um, Honorable Matebula from the NCOP, if he is in, Honorable Apleni, Honorable Chaku, Honorable Sabalala, Honorable Matebula from the NCOP, and Honorable Apleni. In that order, please. Okay. No, thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, for. Yes, uh, you know, good meeting. I'm not going to comment long. Ne? Uh, I think that Commissioner Siwisa has has actually covered me in many of the issues that I, I had. But I would like to say to the two entities, can they do their work? Because the same uh, uh, issues that were raised by the members, we've raised them many, many times. It's like we're not going anywhere. Okay, the issue of transformation, we've raised it. You have a lot of students, but the, the, the students are not actually getting accredited. Okay, so we've been raising that. And can they please I agree with other members? Scrap that thing off in Daba. You are wasting time. I hope that you are going to scrap. You're actually going to scrap. You must take a resolution, or we must take a resolution and write it to you. Don't do in Daba. Daba does not work. It's a talk shop. I don't know how many times. That maybe we must tell you. I think maybe it must be a resolution on the meeting. You must actually find ways that you are going to deal with the transformation decisively. Maybe do, maybe hub or whatever. So you must maybe look at hubs and whatever, but deal with transformation. <coughs> and it was an issue that was raised by the presidents of these entities engineering landscape we have not got a report on those things yeah we, we, we did not get any report there so you, you you are regurgitating presentations and lamenting on the same thing and blaming COVID because i'm hearing COVID now COVID this COVID that but you're not dealing with the issues that we raised as a committee last year of transformation and assisting those presidents of those 
interesting uh, thing is yes. you know, those uh, engineering and all of that because they told you many times that we've got a lot of professionals but they don't have a jobs right. you're not saying anything in terms of going out there getting you know these private companies or making means or making a, a, you know things available uh, you know a, a, a conducive environment so that you get these people to be trained and all of that so please look in, into it uh, in, in, in terms of that chair as i said that i agree with other members in terms of you know uh, uh, the other issues but can you get a closure on these things and can we take a resolution that these indabas and all these useless things that they've been talking about they're not going to do them because it may look it looks as if we're just talking and nothing is happening so i will also plead with the minister with the deputy minister uh, uh, we did raise some of these things there with, with her when they came into the committee can we now maybe put budget into those things that we should talk about transformation and 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 thank you very much uh thank you 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 did not even use your three minutes uh honorable Shabalala. oh sorry Hi. sorry Chair. sorry <laughs> honorable Shabalala. can you hear me Chair? clearly but please ensure that your video is on because we oh. are not at, at parliament yes oh. Okay. Um, I didn't want to be visible. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, honorable members, uh, the presenters, CIDB, CBE, thank you very much uh, for the input. You've helped me uh, revive my memory. With this COVID, anything is possible that you might find yourself having forgotten everything because we are here on the ground. The issue of transformation. Um, whether it links to CBE or CITB, you can share this question for me. Uh, there is this in a uh, bank insurance database contractors. Have you ever checked their grading? Have you ever checked their standing? Have you ever checked in terms of the transformation that you're talking about? Um, because Time and again, I've always seen people of other colors, and it's not a, a represented in demographics. Um, see, I think we have spoken about the incremental uh, budget, uh, but also spoke of the reviewed organogram. Uh, please tell us how is your vacancy rate, and what are the timelines of, of filling that? so that it speaks to to the uh, performance uh, driven um, um, performance driven uh, oversight that you you have uh, the issue of the incubation can you please uh, tell us how far you are CIDB um, the situation analysis I've had uh, the Gauteng Premier talking about uh, around 2 million job losses. How much is, um, a, a, can you, <coughs> can you, how much is, is appropriated to, to the, um, to the uh, construction uh, industry? Um, and also whether it's CITB or CPE, um, can you please um, indicate um, or reassure us as to the uh, uh, the emphasis that you are going to make around the guidelines uh, uh, by the the the, the 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 contractors or the big companies in terms of how they 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 look uh, after their employees, etc and also as a company, as companies following and adhering to the, to the guidelines. Uh, CPE, uh, you, in previously you spoken about uh, INDABA and the resolutions. Um, I've seen the other previous uh, notes that talk to the strategy that some of the things you've incorporated in your strategy. And I, 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 I think we will also be um, 
doing our, our oversight on, on seeing all this uh, being implemented. The post-COVID um, era, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, CPE and uh, CIDP, uh, please look at this one moving into the future so that we will not be saying when post-COVID, then we start the post-COVID. Can we be out looking as the Deputy Minister will, will, will always uh, uh, be saying, not inward uh, uh, looking? Okay, can we please uh, uh, do that? But uh, uh, I, I think for now, uh, Chairperson, let, let me just uh, end there. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Matebula from the NSOP. Uh, Honorable Apleni. Honorable Mashodi. Honorable Ngumalo and Honorable Fans Calvin. Honorable Ngumalo. Honorable Fans Calvin. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I just want to uh, appreciate the condolences uh, that has been sent by yourself and the committee members. Uh, it's comforting during this period. Chair, I'm not going to have been mostly covered by the previous speakers. I'm just going to uh, request that uh, all the indicators that has been submitted by the, uh, the entities, they should give us an indication of the timelines, uh, the dates and the time frames, as well as responsible uh, people for those indicators so that we will be able to monitor and do proper oversight, as well as it will give a proper indication to the Auditor General when they perform their function. But also, Chairperson, uh, the, in terms of the, the, the vacancy rate, as well as the, uh, the, 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 the CIDB and CBE's uh, uh, compliance to the uh, demographics as well as the designated groups in terms of their staff uh, establishment. Can we have uh, updates during the quarterly reports so that we'll be able to monitor that also? And when we look in terms of uh, the different challenges in terms of the skills pipeline, as well as the uh, employment of staff, can they give us a, as an indication of the uh, interfacing and how they liaise with the departments of uh, uh, employment of and labor, as well as uh, basic and higher education? Then, chairperson. When we look at the fourth industrial revolution, we know that uh, during, especially during this COVID uh, period, it's um, uh, important for us, uh, our school kids, our learners at tertiary levels, to be uh, uh, assisted in terms of, of, of equipment. We know that there has been funds allocated uh, by the different uh, entities, uh, CIDB and CBE, in terms of, of, of assisting uh, this, the, the, the learners, can we get an indication of how they plan to redirect these funds to assist with the immediate needs of those learners during this COVID period? I think I'll pause there. Thank you very much, Jay. Um. Honorable Ngumalo, are you still in? Honorable Ngumalo? Um, I, Honorable Mashale? Honorable Mashale? Okay. Um, I don't know whether... Sorted, sir. Oh, Honorable Mashale, are you in? 
Who is that one? Mumalo. It's Michelle. I'm saying I'm sorted. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Michelle. Um, I, I'm just uh, just going to check. Is there any member that have not yet uh, called upon, especially from the NSOP? I can see there is an Honorable Boshoff. I don't know whether is he or she from NSOP. Hello, Chair. Yes, I am. And my questions I have submitted in the meeting chat. So if you could just have a look at that and if I could get responses. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Boshoff. Uh, can can the team uh, note those questions that are, are written on, on the chat uh, part? Uh, just one uh, from me. Um, uh, we must also... Uh, Welcome, DG. DG has since uh, joined us. Um, my my question it 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 encompasses both presentation. Let me add my voice in appreciating the the and welcoming both presentations uh, by CIDD and and, and and CBE. But one of the issues that was raised, uh, especially by the by the the bodies um, that are that are part of the built environment uh, is the issue of transformation. The reality is that uh, that sector has not yet transformed. But one of the issues that they also raise is, is the fact that there is no linkage or complementing uh, between CBE and CIBD uh, for its transformation to occur. Um, my question then is, can um, they clarify uh, how these two uh, entities, CPE and CIDB, plan to work together to ensure that registered professionals comply with the best practice uh, guidelines? And, and two, the question that has been raised by many members, the issue of encouraging the registered uh, professionals. Uh, so I see who is that have not registered, at least we, we don't work with them. Because if we take those that have not registered, we are encouraging uh, those structures to, to fall off because no one is going to register in that professional body if you can be recognized even if you are not registered. So my question is then, how are you planning to work together? to ensure that those registered professionals comply with the best practice uh, guidelines. That is only my question. Uh, over to you. Uh, I've seen that DG has since joined us. Um, over to you, DM and, and, and DG. Uh, and please note, uh, the time now is 10 to 11. Maybe after your, your explanation and your response, members would want to come back again. So please uh, respond. We are giving you um, uh, 40 minutes uh, at half past 11. I'm expecting that you would be true with your responses. So that you take the second round. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I will allow them. The, we will do the usual way. I come at the end. Um, CBE can start. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, DM. Uh, I will address uh, the questions uh, that were raised. The first one, I think it is around the issue of the, the two slides, which is uh, the slide 14 and 15. The other one, it shows the, the registered persons. Those are our professionals. And then the other one, slide 15, it's the candidates. So I think the, the candidate, in terms of the registered persons, it shows the history of our country that previously the, the, the people who were, who were advantaged are the white and the, most of them were males. So we have not shifted the slide because of the, the reasons I think that have been uh, highlighted uh, to the members or the honorable members. Uh, part of them is the, is the issue of the exposure of the candidates to projects. So I think in our last meeting, the, 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 the presidents, they did highlight that 
some of most of the projects uh, for are benefiting that they are still benefiting the white uh, population because they they benefit from the private sector and they again come and uh, and, and, and and get the projects from the public sector. So we are still uh, working around those issues, uh, Chairperson. Uh, it, unfortunately, it's not, it cannot, we cannot resolve it uh, within a short period of time, but we are working together. We are working together with the voluntary associations, and we are also working together with the department so that we are able to assist the professionals. Because for us to be able to, to transform the, 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 the candidates, it, it, they need to be, they, they need to be exposed to infrastructural projects. So it is work in progress, uh, Chairperson. I know that it looks like we, we, we are slow in, in, in that area, but we are trying uh, our best to make sure that our candidates are being supported. But we also have the, the candidacy program that we have been doing as the CBE. The councils are, are also doing the same uh, program, whereby we try to match the candidates with the mentors, because sometimes the candidates, they struggle in terms of the application of, of, of their theory work. So this is the, the program that CBE is doing and the councils are also uh, uh, doing. And they are also having discussions with the CETA because they also need funding so that they are able to, to, to employ and to get the, mentor, the mentors to assist the candidates. So we are hoping to change the graph uh, Jefferson from the, the from, from slide 14 and make sure that most of our candidates they are being uh, they they progress to to, to becoming uh, registered persons. So on the uh, on the medium term uh, uh, framework, I think it's the, it, the, the it, it's millions. It's not uh, rents. It's millions. And then the, on the slide uh, 25, I'll leave that, the, the Internet of Things. The COO will quickly just talk to that one. And then on the issue of Indaba, we, we have made uh, some interventions uh, after our Indaba. One of the interventions is what I've just uh, highlighted here, that we have in place the, the candidacy program. The candidacy program is to help the, the, the candidates so that they can move uh, uh, to equip them so that they are registerable. So it's one of the issues that was uh, raised by the, the, the delegates of Indaba, and we are doing that. And uh, the, the, the delegates also uh, discuss the issues of procurement, the po procurement policies. We are working through the department and uh, the CIDP is also part of that process in terms of uh, have uh, giving our inputs on the procurement bill of the national treasury. One of the things that we are looking at is the issue of uh, the, the, the the rotation of the profession of, of, of the professionals that are registered uh, uh, with the CIDP. So those things, uh, Chairperson, we we are working on them, uh, but unfortunately they cannot take a, a short period of time to resolve. <clears throat> And then on the issues of uh, how are we helping the professional bodies, the professional bodies, we, we, we do support them. We work together with them on the issues of the candidates. Uh, but also we, we, we are engaging, uh, I will be having a, a meeting with Salga. Uh, I've requested a meeting with the CEO because one of the things that we, we have identified is that the municipalities are using uh, unregistered uh, persons. So when we are working with, with Salga, we, we, we are going to address those issues so that we encourage municipalities to use uh, registered uh, persons. So again, we, we are hoping that by the, within this five year uh, period, we'll be able to change that uh, attitude of the municipalities. Uh, <clears throat> Can I perhaps in the meantime <clears throat> ask the CEO to address some of the questions that were raised? CEO, can you come in? Thank you very much, CEO. Allow me to just address some of the questions. 
Uh, I'll try to address them as, as they came. Uh, so I think from uh, Honorable Thring, uh, the question was, was based on the, I, the Internet of Things and the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, given that we do have a program that talks to that. So the question was that, well, does this include the role of uh, 5G? And then the question was the health risk assessment of 5G on empro employees. So essentially, yes. Uh, so what is going to happen then? Uh, in the first year, we're going to work on developing the cloud the strategy plan. So indeed, this cloud strategy plan will include all other issues related to the fourth industrial revolution, including 5G, of course, that will be a component thereof. And within that plan, then the issues of health risk will also be uh, addressed accordingly. But uh, this is an administ under administration program one. So uh, uh, it's going to be looking internally at CBE, how can we use these technologies to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness of, of, of processes within CBE so that CBE is best able to meet its, its targets and its strategic objective. So that's that. And then uh, uh, from Honorable Hickling, uh, there was a question there, what does CBE, uh, what has it done to promote registration? So I think the CEO touched on the fact that we have developed what we call the Structured Candidacy Framework. And the Structured Candidacy Framework essentially say, it shows that the key players, of course, is the, the six professional councils, the employment, the, the, the employers, the workplace. So it also shows precisely what the workplace must do. Uh, uh, of course, much of the, the training of professionals does not happen with the councils, the six councils, does not happen with CBE. It happens at the workplace. So that is that uh, a trial of the players and the structured candidacy framework helps to address issues that were identified. Firstly, we looked at the fact that many workplaces do not have uh, these programs. And then when they do have these programs, these programs are not structured. That's why candidates can take up to 10 years uh, to register as professionals. So that uh, a framework assists in that regard. And then when it comes to um, the school programs, uh, how extensive is it? Uh, I think essentially what's happening here uh, in the next five years, uh, CBE will be undertaking, will be undertaking, continue to undertake career awareness programs over all the provinces. And it's going to partner with the Department of Basic Education so that we reach all the provinces and we reach as many schools as possible. Of course, this is limited by, by budget, but we're trying to be as extensive as possible, guided by the Department of Public, uh, uh, Department of Basic Education. And then, uh, from Honorable Hicklin as well, there was a question on accreditation, looking at the inconsistencies and how are they addressed. So according to uh, our act, we, we as CBE, we are mandated to ensure the consistent application of policy by the councils of the profession with regard to accreditation. So the, the six councils are the ones that uh, administer this accreditation of universities and other academic institutions. So sometimes uh, when we engage with the universities and these institutions of higher learning, they indicate some of the problems are the time it takes to do the accreditation it may differ from each council to council and various processes and, 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 and so forth. So CBE helps to uh, guide that process so that there's consistency and consistency, I mean, and uh, standardization when it comes to, to, to those procedures uh, so that it's smooth from uh, the institution side as well as the, the council side. And then uh, from Honorable Graham uh, uh, Murray, uh, the question was asked, and it's a very important question that, he, that was asked here. Uh, she asked, what value add uh, does CBE have towards the professional bodies, the six professional bodies? And in answering this question, we have to understand that before the year 2000, before this act, uh, the CBE Act and these other acts were put into place, a study found that there was co uh, the, the belt environment was conglomerated. Uh, so there were, we did not have uh, any body that actually sees to it that uh, uh, this, this conglomeration is addressed. And in, fact, in fact, in terms of the act, the act says that the CBE should promote sound governance of this uh, built environment professions. So that's one of the value adds, but also to ensure uniform application of norms and guidelines set by the councils for the professions. So that uniformity is very important so that the, the built environment operates, uh, operates as one, as it were, and not in, in, in silos. So CBE develops these policy frameworks on various issues that these councils have to do to work on based on best international standards. And that's how we help to achieve some of these objectives here. Uh, so that's really part of the, the value add, but we assist them in many other ways. I think time will not allow me to go into all of those. And then um, uh, the next question was uh, from uh, Honorable Siwesa, and she asked about the research hub. 
and uh, she was saying allocations have gone down in this regard. So yes, what has happened is that in terms of the research hub, so we want to have a hub where we centralize the research that's undertaken by institutions, research institutions across the country. So in terms of this, we have already developed during this current financial year, the knowledge management platform. It's an IT system. So essentially then in this year, we'll be uh, uh, loading it with the research and information. And that's why the budget has gone a bit, a bit, uh, it has gone down a bit. And then she was also concerned that for quarter one, two, and three, we don't seem to have targets on the APP. So I think that's true. On the APP, there don't seem to be targets. But of, however, on the annual operation plan, which is more detailed, it does show what activities have been done uh, on a month-to-month and a week-to-week basis. So those details are there. It's just that uh, there are no high-level APP targets that we thought uh, should go into the APP. However, there are consistent targets that we have then. And then uh, moving over to... I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to pronounce uh, uh, your, your name correctly, Honorable uh, Professor. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But uh, I'll address your question regarding the apprentice. You asked uh, and, and raised a very important question. Have you considered apprentices uh, and also considered tax credit to companies so that they can, uh, uh, they'll be motivated and incentivized to take some of these projects? So we do something very much similar. So apprentices are usually for artisans. Uh, the CBE and the professional councils are obviously overlooking the professionals. So we do something similar called the structured candidacy framework that I've talked to. And uh, this particular candidacy framework, yeah, it's, it's almost similar to apprentices, but it looks at professionals. And I think that the, the suggestion of tax credit, we would certainly have to take it up so that we incentivize the, empl- the employers uh, to have these structured candidacy programs that help their professionals to uh, candidates to register to, to become professionals. So that's a good uh, input that we'll definitely look into. And then uh, I'll jump to the one that was asked by, there was a question from uh, uh, Honorable Boshoff. I read it from uh, uh, from the meeting chat. Uh, the one that I, I can address, it talks to how many appeals have been uh, finalized uh, in the time frame of 60 days. So I'll just report on the past uh, financial year. Uh, during that period, we actually had 15 of these appeals that came to CBE. So many of these appeals usually are when the public is complaining that the professional did not uh, uh, conduct their work accordingly, or it's professionals complaining about registration. They apply to be registered with the six councils, but the registration is not approved, or it's uh, a decision that's made by the professional councils that has been uh, opposed and so forth. So during the last uh, financial year, we had 15, 15 of these appeals, and all of them we managed to address within 60 days. And we actually have developed some systems to make sure that we're able to uh, consistently address these appeals within the period of 60 days. So that we have done. And then uh, moving to uh, the chair's, uh, Honorable Chair uh, uh questions. The first one was a CIDB and CBE. And the question was saying, well, how, do we, how do we work together and how do we collaborate so that we are effective in, in, our, in our industry? So, so just to clarify, the, the, the CIDB, uh, its mandate is really to uh, oversee contractors. The contractors are the companies. And of course, these companies are that, uh, 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 that conduct construction projects, they employ professionals. So that's where CBE comes in. So CIDB, it's contractors, the companies, but CBE and its six councils are overlooking the professionals, the actual individuals uh, that register as professionals that are then employed by these contracting companies. So we see the link there. And that's how we work with, uh, with the CIDB. One of the things that we want to do would go to CIDB and say, okay, show us your register of contractors. We find the companies there. And we'll make sure that all of those companies then implement the structured candidacy framework that will fast track the development of professionals into being registered. So that's essentially how we'll, we'll work together there. But it's very important to see the difference mandate, the differences in terms of the mandate, and then we'll be able to see from there how we are able to work together. And then lastly, uh, uh, Chair, you also asked the question about uh, how do we encourage registration? I think what is important to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to consider here is that the Professions Act, the six acts of the, our professional uh, bodies, they state that only registered persons may practice uh, or undertake certain type of work. So really, it's, uh, uh, professionals know very well that you can only 
undertake certain work if you are registered. And that's one of the uh, 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 the reasons why they would want to register, just like you would not allow yourself to be operated into by uh, someone who professes to be a doctor or a surgeon, but they're not registered. Uh, and so that's why we want to have a, a awareness campaigns, a CBE, so that the public well knows that about this and they're able to ensure that before they get service from any uh, a person who professes to be a registered engineer, a registered architect, landscape architect, quantity surveyor, that this person, they're able to go into the uh, the website and check whether this person is registered uh, professionally to do so. Uh, otherwise, they're not protected uh, if the work is not uh, up to scratch and the quality is not appropriate as it were. So that's essentially how we want to encourage registration as well by uh, the, the skills development pipeline We from school level all the way to universities. There are student charters as well to uh, to encourage already uh, students in universities to start looking at registering as soon as they start working as candidates. So those are, those programs are also in place to encourage registration. But registration is regulated, as it were, and uh, persons undertaking uh, specific work must be registered uh, as per the regulation. So I think, Chair, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, I think I'll stop here and I'll go back to the CEO if he wants to address some of the questions of the Chair uh, or the chair of the CBE. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Perhaps let's give CIDB an opportunity so we can add after the CIDB has responded. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, the, the first question was around uh, research and development. Um, and uh, there was a question which says that how many apprenticeships uh, have we developed uh, in, 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 in the industry? Uh, I must say that uh, our emphasis has not really been in collecting that data, but uh, through our skills development standard, what we do is that we make sure that uh, we enable the contractors uh, to be able to uh, uh, access you know, people who need skills to be developed. Uh, and also the industry asked us to revise the fee which they actually pay uh, to the trainees uh, which they are developing because that fee is actually claimable uh, back uh, from the clients. So as part of our research and development, we will be increasing uh, the database of those things uh, which we are collecting. But we are also currently uh, uh, engaging the construction sitter, uh, and we think that they do have uh, that data. So we will be sharing uh, quite a lot of data between ourselves and the construction sitter. Uh, a question was also asked about uh, COVID-19, uh, whether uh, we will be affected and which budgets uh, will be affected by COVID-19. Um, if we look at the CIDB budget, uh, it's roughly 60% fees which are paid by contractors and the 40% is a grant from the department. Now, if you look at COVID-19, uh, COVID uh, many people may struggle uh, to pay uh, their fees, uh, but we have not really ascertained at which level uh, that will affect us. So we will be looking closely uh, uh, when the fees are coming in uh, to see how much uh, we are affected. Uh, so we will be giving that information as we go forward. Uh, on slide 33, uh, there was a concern that uh, the, the, uh, the research and development budget is only about 3.6%, uh, and a, a question was asked whether we really take research and development seriously. Uh, I should agree that we'd really take it differently. Uh, before the restructuring of the organization, uh, the, the research and development was embedded in various programs. So it was not a standalone. So we're currently in a transitional process uh, whereby research and development is a standalone program. Uh, and we will be increasing uh, that budget as we go along uh, through various sources of funding. Uh, some of the funding we're negotiating with the CETA, uh, some of the funding as well 
we've got the best practice fee uh, which the department is going to sign and then that will also be a contribution uh, to that so so it will be an increasing uh, F, a, a, a budget as we go forward the next question was about the epw program and uh, and and the comment that it's a poverty alle alleviation program uh, and uh, uh, basically when people go to that problem program uh, they actually do the bare minimum uh, because they 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 get the bare minimum uh, in terms of their stipends uh, as well now the question was asked how we can uh, probably uh, make sure that people who get into those programs uh, really become fully trained uh, uh, at the end of the day not that they just get get into that program and then they wait uh, 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 maybe on the following year uh, to come back now uh, unfortunately i'll be having much on this best practice fee because this best practice fee is going to help us uh, in the skills development because we've got two standards uh, in that area you have the enterprise development standard as well as the skills standard uh, which will be enforceable afterwards uh, when it's signed so what we may do for instance if you actually look on the ground you find that there are lots of uh, youngsters who already have done a bit of theory maybe they have done n2 or n3 uh, in various trades and then when there is uh, there is some work they go in there so if they go on an epw uh, program i think those uh, uh, that youth uh, can actually be trained because of the basics so we can take some money from the best practice fee uh, from the best practice fee uh, to actually augment the epwp fee uh, so that we 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 go forward um so can, can I just get, can, get the battery for me? I'm, I'm running low. My back, yeah. Uh, right, so that is actually how uh, we can uh, uh, approve, I mean, improve uh, EPWP and make sure that the people who actually go out there, they have a tangible, portable uh, qualification. But we will have to identify those people coming in. It shouldn't be just a, 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 sta a standard. Uh, now the other the other question was about uh, people who are injured on duty, uh, uh, what uh, we are doing about them, and uh, uh, and whether we have stats of that. Unfortunately, usually that uh, that uh, usually belongs uh, to the Department of Labour, uh, but going forward, if uh, uh, they are needed, it's some of the statistics uh, which we can share. Uh, with our various stakeholders, uh, including uh, 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 the portfolio committee. Uh, the next, uh, the next question is uh, the next question is the what was uh, from transformation, uh, and uh, we were uh, urged to make sure that transformation is rigorous in terms of approach, uh, and also. Uh, there was an issue where there was a question about the moratorium uh, of downgrading because that was one of the challenges. Now the moratorium is still on. Uh, we 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 have not revised it. Uh, we were hoping uh, to revise it now this year, but the COVID-19 uh, is going to make it very challenging to revise it because. A part of the, the the grading process is that there is an amount which you must earn at a certain level. So if you have COVID-19, uh, then people are not able to earn things to a certain uh, 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 revenues to a certain level, and therefore it might disadvantage them. We will look at it, but it's still on at the moment. But COVID-19 uh, may end up uh, just pushing it uh, forward. Now, in terms of revised uh, revised uh, 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 values uh, for different grades, uh, we did revise them last year, uh, and now uh, lower grades actually have 50% more access 
to the value of the projects which they can do. And that also, that also came from our interaction with our stakeholders because uh, we interact with our stakeholders quite a lot uh, and they appreciate uh, that uh, added value which they can do. But unfortunately, uh, there are diminishing returns uh, during this COVID-19 uh, uh, era. Now, the other, uh, the other uh, request was the development of a district development model uh, where we work closely with local municipalities and metros. Uh, we are on the process uh, of, 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 of closely working uh, 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 with the metros uh, there are some metros and local uh, uh, municipalities uh, who have actually visited us, asked uh, a few questions because uh, there are quite a lot of uh, contradicting uh, issues uh, in, 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 in public and misinterpretation sometimes uh, of the CIDB Act. So we've been able to clarify uh, those, those, those things to, the, uh, to local government. Now, one of the things which is uh, uh, going to be implemented uh, more rigorously to uh, Hello, can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the, my power just went off. I've reconnected. Yes. Now there is uh, something which is called the IDMS, uh, which actually helps in the implementation of in infrastructure, uh, and it is we are working with Treasury to make sure that uh, there is proper training at local government uh, for the IDMS uh, program. The other question was as the risk mitigation uh, 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 in terms of uh, cost and quality. And the feeling was that uh, CIDP has taken an approach that it's the client's problem and uh, not uh, CIDP's problem. And uh, uh, examples were raised that uh, sometimes people take projects and then uh, they leave them without finishing them, etc. Now, as CIDB, we have a, a developed a contractor performance rating a, a, a system, and then we have given that contractor performance rating system to our clients. Now, the challenge is that this contractor rating system is optional. So in other words, uh, if, if you don't fill it in and return it back to I, CIDB, there's nothing which happens to you. Now, to give you an, a, a view of how much return in terms of those forms, it's about 3%. Only 3% of the clients return uh, those contractor performance ratings. Now, going forward, I think uh, we need to look probably at regulations which can make that compulsory uh, as part of the implementation of projects. And we can also probably make it part of your review uh, as a contractor uh, uh, to see whether you actually have ratings uh, from your client. But unfortunately, that, that becomes a, 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 some change in regulations, uh, which will need approval at, at some stage. But we started by being uh, voluntary, ma making the process voluntary uh, at the moment. Uh, there was also an issue of slide 10 where we said uh, uh, compliance and fraud is low. Uh, unfortunately, it's a typo and it's the other way around. Uh, we actually get a lot of complaints uh, from clients and we investigate uh, those complaints and we, 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 we sanction uh, the contractors uh, appropriately. Uh, my apologies to that. It was not low, but it was high. Uh, it was a typo. Um, the, the other one was an issue of the vacancy rate uh, at CIDP. Uh, currently, our vacancy rate is between 20 and 30 percent. 
uh, because we have uh, uh, finished the reorganization uh, uh, of the company uh, end of last year, uh, but we are at the moment filling the vacancies at a good rate, and by the end of this financial year, we shouldn't really be having uh, any any vacancies uh, whatsoever. Uh, the other one was about uh, in our APPs that there should be indicators, dates, uh, etc. Uh, there the are dates uh, in the details uh, of the, 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 the APPs, uh, which will uh, uh, improve uh, uh, the monitoring uh, of ourselves. Now, the other question was uh, uh, assisting schools. Uh, unfortunately, at CITP, we have not really uh, assisted schools, but we are working with the University of Johannesburg back where we have a center of excellence uh, where they help us with some research uh, which we are doing uh, even recently they've uh, helped us with some uh, COVID-19 research uh, we also uh, sponsor TVET colleges on the world skills uh, every year there is a program of world skills where different uh, uh, artisans uh, go and showcase uh, their skills uh, around the world. So we sponsor the, the national competition uh, as well as those people who actually go to the world stage uh, at the end of the day. And the last question was linkages between CIDP and CBE, uh, which I think the COO has, uh, has uh, 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 answered uh, quite nicely. From a CIDP side, we're looking at companies which are implementing projects. So we look at contractor companies, not individuals, and also going forward, we will be looking at professionals, professional companies, not the professionals as individuals. Now then that will help because a project usually starts at the professional side where it's concept design, and then from design and then it gets built. So uh, that is really how uh, CITP uh, uh, and, uh, and CPE interact. So if the professionals within the companies don't behave, uh, the councils deal with those individuals. But in future, if the companies themselves don't behave in terms of the implementation of projects, then CPE will sanction the companies. So that is the slight uh, difference uh, of how we uh, interact and discharge our duties between CITP and CPE. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, DL and DJ, um, you left with five minutes to come in. DL and DJ. Okay. Th th Thank you, thank you, um, thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Um, is this 10 minutes because we are closing now? No, no, um, we are going to allow another round of follow up questions. Or should I? Oh, okay. I think you must come in at the, at the later end. Uh, let me, let yes. me then in. Let me then invite uh, honourable members um, that would like to 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 come on on follow up questions. Honourable Bratisit has follow up questions. Honourable Bratisit. Okay. Uh, honourable Bratisit. Honourable Siwisa. Chwaku. Um, honourable Chwaku. Who else members? Okay, let's let's allow those three to to come on on the follow up questions. Thank you, Chair. May I proceed? <clears throat> okay, Chair, I, I will proceed. Um, <clears throat> Chair, I asked a question to the CBE about slide twenty six of their presentation relating to our hotline. 
I didn't hear a response to that. Um, the request was is if they could just send their committees a report on what calls, <clears throat> can we say maybe over the last year, what calls have been received by the hotline and what action has been taken on those calls. Um, that was the question which was not answered. And then um, on CIDB, um, I, I may have missed a little bit there because I had a bit of a, a, an interference in terms of uh, connection. But I didn't get the answer about what CIDB will do about bad actors. Uh, those South Africans that received contracts but did not perform in terms of those contracts. If, if, if the department of the entity could just help me with that response. And then finally, um, on the typo about the uh, that, that corruption and fraud was low, thank you for correcting that. Then may I also request that the committees receive, let's say for the past year, um, all the incidences of fraud and corruption that they have uncovered, because they now have admitted it is actually high, um, and give us a list of those things, but a detailed list to check. If we could ask for what the incident was, what project it related to, the amount involved, the persons involved, and what action was taken against them. That is the kind of detail the committee needs to make sure that we're actually holding people that are involved in those activities to account. I think the committee will find that very useful. Thank you, Chair. Honourable uh, Sewisa. Thank you, Chair. Um, mine is, is just a comment and another follow-up. My first one would be, or again, on slide 14 and 15, and the explanation from Uma Munzalosi to say that because of this is how things were in the past, we are still struggling with it. I mean, we are 26 years into democracy, and we are still sitting with a problem of white dominant registered and candidacy African dominant. So I don't know, we are 26 years. Do they want to tell me in the past so many parliament, parliaments that have been sitting, they've never addressed this issue and we are still stuck at the same place where we were before, uh, uh, before 26 years from now. And then follow-up question is that one council raised an issue of not getting enough financial assistance from the CBE. How far are you as CBE to address the issue of not assisting these councils financially, even if they are submitting their budgets on time to show that how are they going to spend their, their money? And then my question on less money on transformation, more money on skills hasn't been answered. How logic is that, that you are going to spend less money on transformation, but you want to give people more skills to go into a field that is less transformed? Thank you. Uh, Honorable Chagu. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chairperson. The mine, <coughs> mine would be a, a bit short as well. I wanted to agree with the sentiments of the uh, Honorable Suiza. Uh, now, the CITB can we please answer honestly and proper and to the point. And especially Mohim, uh, don't use too much English. A lot of English, and you are really confusing me. Because I was trying to check in terms of your explanations and everything. There was a question here by the honorable member for God that says, What value add will a person get when we say, I have registered with, you know, with whatever EXA or whatever? What value add? You know any value. Why do I have to do it? And when you guys went to the committee, we told you that there are companies, many of them, and we even quoted Sasol, that they do not, it's not a requirement to be registered with the 
professional bodies. The question was, what value add on, you know, to the other individual? Why do I have to do it? I do chemical engineering or, and I'm done. Why do I have to register with you? What is an incentive? Not those things of you telling what, what, and policy, what, I don't understand what you're saying there. I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. I mean, I'm not a person of many words, and I like people to go to the point. What value add? Or if that's not the case, what steps are you going to take to enforce? Don't say that we went and spoke and lobbied and talked to these ones that they must do it. What, what steps are you going to take concisely, concretely? to say you are going to put the systems in place, we are going to police them, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, we are going to have people go and check them and whatever. What concrete things, not proposals and what, what. And then another thing, and I still say a, a, a chairperson um, of the C, of your CBE, the presidents there came to your place there, they came to committee, and they're saying that there are people are not, uh, there are many professionals, but they don't get in jobs. And you are lamenting again, saying that, oh no, the problem is that we need to, you know, uh, lobby private sector to get, you know, jobs, and, you know, so that our people getting trained or we must get, uh, uh, what is this thing, uh, you know, uh, 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 private sector must train our people or our people who are professionals already must get jobs. What are you doing? What What is your vision in terms of making sure that the professionals which are already registered with the bodies get the, their jobs from government? Who are you talking to from the government? What are you pushing? Not lobby and what, what, what meetings have you had? Have you talked to National Treasury? Because remember, they even talked about the rotation system that was used before so that work is shared. You are having a crisis of 74% white people getting jobs. But you've got you 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 are you are actually having black people not getting anything. You are having a huge crisis, and it's not normal. We are going to be losing patience. So can you please maybe say what are you going to do? Because you could have used uh, maybe talk to ITT. ITT is sort of a a, a a a company that can be using to skill people, or maybe been used to be able you know uh, uh, you know to. You know, having those construction uh, that are happening, a state-owned, con you should have maybe having a state-owned construction companies, uh, you know, and, and skilled the people so that people can be able to actually get jobs. So, what what is your vision? How are you going to sort out this issue of non-transformation? And you are not saying a lot. You must get to the point. This is what I'm going to do. One, two, three, and four. Uh, that those are the well, I'm using most of some of my uh, three minutes, Chairperson. But no, thank you for that. I, um, I think I'm, I'm going to be asking them all the time. That I'm going to be an irritation to tell us what is the, how are they going to transfer. And uh, the minister, we did uh, raise this issue, I think, uh, in, in the meeting there. How are these people are going, how that, that thing is going to be transformed? How are the black professionals registered are going to be getting jobs? Uh, thank you very much. And what's the person? Uh, um, I think I'm alone here. Yeah. I think I didn't dare to have. Honorable members, um, no one else has indicated that uh, that person wants a, a, a bite. Um, I will then hand over uh, to. Um, DM, um, DG, and, 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 and the teams, in fact, CIDB and um, CBE. Uh, the time now is 11.36. Um, we would request that at least by then too, so that we were able to round up together with Honorable Maimad. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. It's uh, CBE. Chairperson? Yeah, over to you, Honorable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Let me respond to the issue of uh, the hotline I've just uh, indicated here in, 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 in writing. We are going to, we do get uh, the, the reports 
the incident reports from our hotline. So we are going to compile the report and send it to to the honourable members. So we are going to do that, uh, Chairperson. And then on the issues of uh, of transformation, we, Chairperson, we, we are unfortunately we ha we do have to engage the, the the companies because the companies are responsible for employing. The, the candidates. So we have to keep on engaging them and uh, so that they help us in absorbing the candidates that we, 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 we want to move from being candidates to registered persons. It, we, it, it, it might take time, but uh, that is uh, the strategy which we believe will work so that we work together with the industry uh, to, to help us in, in transforming. Yes, we are going to monitor as well in terms of what is happening in those companies. We, we will have to enforce the issues of, of transformation in those companies, and we will be doing so uh, going forward, uh, Chairperson. And then on the issues of the, the transformation funds that has been reduced, in the previous years, transformation and skills were in one program. So we have separated now the two. And if you look at the interventions for transformation, we were focusing on the transformation in DABA and the collaborative forums. And I hear what the, the, the honorable members are saying that we need to step out of, uh, of the talk shows and start engaging the, the industry directly. So we believe that the budget that we have set for that will be enough for us to, to do so. And we, we have engaged uh, the, the, the department and through the, the, the procurement bill, we have also uh, requested the inclusion of the rotation uh, system by National Treasury. So we are taking forward the issues that are presented by the presidents uh, to the uh, relevant departments, uh, Chairperson. I don't know whether my chairperson would want to add something, but from my side, I think this is what I can uh, respond to. Yeah, thanks, thanks, CEO. And um, through you, chairperson, um, I would like to speak to um, the issues raised by Councillor, uh, I mean, Honourable Member um, Siwisa and uh, uh, Chwaku. Um, I think you also um, 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 maybe um, touched on this issue um, in the last set of uh, questions. The issue of progression of uh, 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 candidates, uh, black candidates, um, into registered professionals, and uh, the issue of uh, transformation. Now, um, we're currently sitting with um, states that show that um, in, in, in the registers of the six councils combined, um, we have got about 73% white professionals um, uh, in, the, in our databases. This is a serious matter. And if you will recall, um, apparently I only joined the uh, CPE uh, in January this year. If you will recall, in, 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 in our first presentation in February, uh, I did raise this issue and I said, please, uh, 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 Honorable Chair, assist us on this matter. We have identified a number of um, uh, uh, policies um, um, and um, uh, that um, inhibit transformation in as far as these issues are concerned. And um, uh, we have identified in terms of uh, how uh, uh, those um, uh, 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 barriers uh, can be uh, uh, eradicated uh, for transformation uh, in, the, in the in in the built environment uh, space uh, to okay. So basically, what what we have been doing, um, um, although we've been interrupted by the uh, 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 COVID pandemic over the past month or so, uh, is uh, through uh, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure (IGC) uh, uh, department. Um, we have, we, we, we have already uh, uh, initiated discussions, serious discussions uh, on this matter uh, that will uh, involve National Treasury and other infrastructure departments because uh, the scope is quite broad in terms of where 
our, uh, for instance, um, uh, professionals that do not have work and candidates um, uh, uh, that are finding it difficult to get absorbed uh, into the, uh, the different um, uh, 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 councils is concerned. So we, we, we have been engaging uh, uh, with the department in, uh, as far as those issues are concerned. And what we are proposing is to come up with a monitoring and evaluation uh, system there uh, that will enable us to say, I mean, currently government is sitting with more than 200 projects that are active, that are active or that were active uh, uh, before the COVID uh, pandemic started. If we can go and do um, a, an analysis of those uh, projects in terms of how many black professionals are involved there, how many candidates are those professionals uh, uh, absorbing? Those are the those are the areas. Those are the key areas, and 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 would need uh, your assistance in as far as making those interventions. And we have in, we, we, we we we've estimated that within a space of two months we can be able to make uh, the necessary. Uh, 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 interventions and progress in as far as these issues are concerned. Make sure that, number one, professionals that currently are sitting without work get deployed in most of those projects that are active, and candidates uh, uh, that are currently, um, that have graduated, that do not have work, uh, they get deployed. Uh, we fo they, they are forced into those projects. Because government, might, uh, there's nothing... It, it's, 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 it's difficult to understand why it is difficult for government to actually force me, if they've given me a project, to employ so many graduates, depending on the value of the project that has been uh, uh, allocated to me. And this cuts across CIDP. That's where, um, Chairperson, we've also identified uh, uh, um, areas of collaboration with CIDP because uh, some professionals can also absorb some of our uh, candidate uh, uh, um, uh, professionals um, so that uh, they get the necessary uh, exposure in practice so that they are ultimately registered as, pros uh, as, as professionals. And I'm sure within a space of two years, we can be able to see uh, some progress in as far as reducing or balancing uh, the status quo in terms of that 70. 3% uh, that we are currently sitting with in terms of uh, white professionals that are dominating the uh, built environment space. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm not sure whether the entities are done, Chair, so no. that I can come oh. in. Uh, DM, uh, it's CITB. Um, well, I was just waiting for to, to give us a go ahead. Uh, there were follow up questions uh, to CITB. Uh, I think the Honorable Member is not here because I think of interference. Uh, as to what you do as CITB on performing contractors. Uh, what I said is that we have developed a contractor performance rating uh, system which we have given to clients. So whenever the clients, whenever, whenever the contractors have finished the project, the client must actually rate the contractor and return that to CIDB. I'm not sure whether the Honorable Member is here because I can hear that there is quite some interference. Um, so, 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 there is a system whereby the client rates the contractor and that, that, that form needs to come back to CIDB. Now, at the moment, this system is voluntary. So, in other words, uh, there is nothing which forces the client to return that rating uh, 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 form. Now, at the moment, we are having a very low return from the clients. Uh, it's around 3%. Now, we have looked at this challenge and said maybe going into the future, one, we can actually make it a regulation that whenever you give a project, part of that is to raise the contractor. So if there is a regulation, we need to go uh, into an approval process. 
Uh, and secondly, we also probably need to include it uh, in the renewal process. So when you renew your grading, uh, therefore that must be a new, uh, that must be taken into account how you have been performing. Uh, also, it's a legislative process. Uh, it might uh, take take uh, a, a little bit uh, longer. Uh, I hope it clarifies what uh, we have done as CIDB uh, to ensure that uh, we reduce the bad performing contractors. Uh, the second part was that uh, uh, we have said that the, 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 there is fraud and corruption, uh, which is reported to CIDB, and CIDB deals with it uh, as it comes to it. And there was a request that uh, we forward that information uh, to the committee. So CIDP will be compiling that information and forwarding it uh, to the committee. Thank you. Chairperson, if, if I may, uh, just on the issue of um, black professionals and uh, black contractors who are not uh, getting work, I think it's, it, it's a common problem. But I do think, like the chair of the CBE has indicated, there is something that uh, can be done by us, uh, but it's more on the monitoring side and on reporting. I think two critical issues uh, uh, must be um, undertaken broadly by government as, as the main um, uh, uh, procurer of, of this service. Uh, just to ensure that uh, work, one, is given, and two, it's given on time, and any feedback is given to these two entities also on time, if people are performing or not performing. Our biggest challenge is that they are, there is work, but it's not allocated uh, on time in terms of tendering and awarding of tenders. Currently, there are a number of tenders that have not been awarded, and unfortunately, people can't get qualifications, can't get the skills they need if they are not in actual projects. So they, that aspect, I think, is very critical. And lastly, uh, I accept that the issue of numbers uh, between, uh, uh, between black and white uh, uh, is, is disproportionately higher insofar as the white uh, candidates are concerned. There is a clear reason for that. Uh, the, the, the white companies generally get work from private sector companies and also get work from the, the public sector uh, from the public sector. So naturally their candidates will go faster because they are exposed to work compared to the black candidates who are generally employed in, in black owned companies. So it is something that I think should concern uh, uh, members of parliament but concerns us but ultimately in the final analysis there is a need for projects to be issued so that other than regulating and monitoring, there's very little uh, that uh, entities can do in granting that experience to, to contractors and or professionals. Thank you very much. Hey, Chair. Hello, Chairperson? Hello? Yeah, okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chairperson, uh, this is uh, Monatolo Moas. I thought I'd to just respond to two, uh, two matters very quickly before DM comes in from the department. Okay. Yes. Um, so, Honorable Chairperson, there was a question from Honorable Three around the issues of the budget, uh, where, she, uh, where he was asking um you know given the the covid uh, 19 um uh, uh, you know the pandemic that we are faced with uh, what is going to happen especially in terms of the budgets i just need to indicate that we have actually received a communication from national treasury in terms of uh, you know making submissions for reprioritization of our our baselines uh, there's an about there's about 130 billion that is requested from uh, the baselines, our existing baselines that must be contributed to the response package. So that communication has been received, and we are now going to be communicating with the public entities uh, to ensure that they reprioritize. Now, I I I I thought this is very important, especially given what Honourable Chuck has indicated that let's put money on the transformation. It's really a serious balancing act because on one 
and we need to cut our budgets, existing budgets, so that we can contribute to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And on the other, we also need to deal with the current, uh, you know, challenges that we have that also require money. But this is something that we will be dealing with uh, uh, with our public entities. And unfortunately, responses are required, uh, I think, by the 22nd to our national trigger. Uh, that's the point around the budget. There was also the issue raised by, I think it was uh, Honorable Bratesa, around the um, the issue of uh, the, you know, uh, CIDB must create some kind of a reserve list of contractors who poorly performed. And I'm not sure if CIDB responded to this. I, I was struggling to connect at some point. Uh, but I, I just wanted to indicate that yeah, much, much as the honourable um, uh, member has indicated that CIDB's responsibility cannot just be uh, sitting there and saying that this is the responsibility of clients. Uh, however, clients have a responsibility to report to CIDB so that CIDB is able to keep this uh, a list of these uh, poorly performing uh, contractors. So we definitely have a dual responsibility. We have to assist the CIDB as clients, whether municipalities or departments. The last point, uh, Chairperson, is on the link uh, where it was indicated by, I think it was Honorable, I mean, it was the chair, the issues around um, no link between CIDB and CBE. And then uh, I think Chair also spoke around the issue of the register of professionals. Uh, as, you, as you will see that uh, the, the Ministry of has put there a slide on the making sure that we now have a register of professionals. But they, 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 you, will, you will see that the reading of that uh, slide says that it will become compulsory from uh, financial year 2021 uh, further. Um, meaning that between now and the beginning of the next financial year, there must be an engagement between CBE and CIDB and the department itself. Because you will, you will notice that the CIDB keeps a register of contractors and projects. And then one would then understand that CBE should keep a register of professionals. However, the act of CIDB says that they may keep a register of professionals. Now, we just need to interact, the three of us, uh, so that we ensure that uh, the register is kept, whether it's with CIDB or CBE. That's the interaction that will be happening between now and the end of the financial year to ensure that it is by the beginning of the financial year, next financial year, we do have that uh, that list. Uh, list. Uh, without taking too much time, I thought I should just uh, um, hop on those two. There was an issue around collaboration forum and the uh, discontinuation of the transformation in Dava. We will definitely engage uh, C, uh, CBE on that so that we continue with the collaboration forums that we have established that will deal with the four key things, the procurement issue, the issue of the skills development, gender, and OST. Thank you, Chair. Um, DM, uh, we have a serious issue of time because we have to round up as, as, as both chairs. Uh, so, if you can try within a minute, DM, a minute. Yes, thank you, Chair. I do want to say, though, Chair, the issue of transformation depends much more on the people, the attitude, the, the attitude of those who must drive uh, transformation. Um, and without the positive attitude, willing mind and the willing soul to do it, Whatever uh, the whatever the law says, um, if you do not have a, a a proactive driver to interpret and act uh, on on that law, it should be a law on on paper. And we need to assist each other here to drive both entities out of this inward-looking approach uh, to this outward approach that talks to transformation as part of their program. We have started as the ministry uh, to do that by giving them uh, instructions on, on some of the issues to do, which we know will lead to what we would want to see. We've given them six months in both uh, presentations. There will be slides that will be saying uh, issues from the minister. 
those are the tasks that we've given them to say, finish this one within six months. Because we know once they do them, they will, they will propel uh, what you would want to see having been done in uh, terms of transformation. And what uh, Mr. Mwasa has said on the working groups, we really need to resuscitate those because we have had a lapse uh, out of the COVID experience. Those working groups are very important for us to ensure inclusivity, but they also talk to integration and um, uh, driving our work uh, in an advocacy kind of approach. Uh, once we do that, we will see the results. So for me, Chair, in, in, in um, appreciating the time given to us and uh, indicating that, that if there's additional information required, we are willing and ready to provide. And uh, let me thank the opportunity uh, from the department's side and indicate that um, the issue of transformation is at the center of what as a ministry we are doing and we are driving. Um, if it means by the staff of the NEC, as COVID is doing to us, we will also be doing the same to the institutions we are responsible for. So in, in thanking you, I do want to appreciate the opportunity and uh, thank the honorable members for the ideas that they have shared with us. Because some of the questions are more of uh, uh, providing ideas and uh, in, 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 uh, provoking our thought process to say, consider this. We will consider those uh, proposals uh, that seek to enhance the work that we do. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Maimang, just one minute. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Chair, indeed, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of work that must still be done. Uh, from both entities, the Construction Industry and Development Board, and the Council for Built Environment. Uh, in terms of the, the work that we must focus on, uh, it will be centered around uh, transformation. But for transformation to happen, uh, the issue of uh, research and development, particularly around uh, uh, these professional bodies, particularly around these uh, uh, councils, uh, it's important that uh, we are able to, to, to put our money uh, where our mouth is, so that we are able to ensure that uh, there are no uh, excuses provided by these uh, uh, councils in terms of how these entities are going to interact and interface with them to ensure that uh, there is candidacy uh, development program to ensure that both professionals and also candidates are registered. But more than that, I think what is critical from our side is to ensure that regulations and policies are put in place to ensure that we are able to ensure that uh, councils are able to, to do their work. But more than that, uh, the voluntary nature in terms of how uh, clients uh, must report to uh, the CIDB and the CBE, it must come to an end. We must use our incumbency advantage as, as government to ensure that the amount of work and projects that we are dispensing must be used as a transformation tool uh, so that we are then able to mitigate the skewed pattern that was presented to us in terms of uh, the number of uh, registered candidates and professionals in those six, uh, six uh, professional councils that were uh, put before us. But more than that, uh, we are also mindful of the fact that there is a lot that is expected in terms of uh, uh, reprioritization, but even if reprioritization happens, transformation must not be compromised. Research and development must not be compromised. Uh, we must just up our monitoring and evaluation. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, honorable members, uh, 
as you all know, that we have been given only up to 12. Uh, so now we have to end our meeting, but just one item, um, uh, DM and, and the team and, and, and the entities. Uh, as this committee, we have been saying this since last year, that transformation must happen. But we feel that CBE and CIDB don't have the necessary legislation uh, or the, the current legislation has to be amended to, to ensure that the transformation, it happens. And then that lies with the minister and, and the DM. So you, mu you must ensure that there is necessary legislation to drive the transformation. Uh, honorable members, um, DM, DG, and the team, the entities, both chairs, we really appreciate uh, your attendance in this meeting. Your presentation uh, were well received by the honorable members. Uh, because of the time constraints, we have to adjourn this meeting. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.